Number 10. Deirdre Orozco 50-year-old Deirdre Orozco was driving down the I-80 interstate in California in 2014 when she got into a bizarre altercation with another driver. It ended with Orozco ramming her vehicle into a woman's car in an attempt to run her off the road. Orozco later claimed that she was trying to carry out a citizen's arrest on the other driver, whom she claimed she saw texting while behind the wheel, putting other motorists in danger. But that's not exactly how things went down, according to Vanessa Gladio, the woman who was driving the car that was struck. She also had a passenger in her car who backed up her story. After getting hit, the pair dialed 911 and were guided to safety. Police didn't exactly buy Orozco's story. They arrested her for reckless driving, resisting arrest, and assault with a deadly weapon. Just days earlier, Orozco had been charged in relation to another bizarre traffic incident in which she was accused of throwing rocks through another driver's window and making threats before fleeing the scene. According to court documents, she pleaded no contest to making threats to commit a crime, resulting in death and assault with a deadly weapon. Orozco was sentenced to a little over two and a half years in county jail, followed by five years of probation. Number 9. Erica Cole when a 31-year-old Alabama woman named Erica Cole found herself caught up in an episode of Road Rage in 2019, she pulled out her gun and aimed at the party she was angry at. But she missed the mark and accidentally shot her husband, Nicholas Cole, in the head. Deputies from the Cullman County Sheriff's Office responded to the scene and arrested Erica for her nearly fatal outburst. In the meantime, Nicholas was taken to the hospital, where he was soon reported to be in a stable condition. The man that Erica meant to shoot walked away with minor injuries. A nearby resident told local station WVTM-13 that they heard a loud blast and thought it was fireworks at first. They realized what was going on when they looked outside and saw Nicholas on the ground. More details of the altercation came to light in the days following the chaotic ordeal. Apparently, the couple got into an argument with another driver in Dodge City. According to the police report, Erica tried to separate her husband and another man, who were exchanging heated words. Even though the police believed that she was trying to break the two up, they concluded that she most likely fired the gun on purpose. Number 8. Destiny Edwards In a regrettable moment of anger, a motorist shot another driver in a Commerce City, Colorado alleyway in early March. The ordeal started with road rage and ended with a collision between the two vehicles. Both drivers got out of their cars, at which point one shot the other and fled the scene. The victim thankfully survived and was taken to the hospital, where they were treated for a gunshot wound. Police identified 24-year-old Destiny Edwards as their prime suspect and put out a wanted bulletin on social media featuring the woman's photo. Edwards was apprehended a week after the shooting. She is currently being held on a $75,000 bond. Number 7. Bikers vs. Honda Driver Police in Boston, Massachusetts recently responded to a call about a fight going on outside of McDonald's in the city's Dorchester neighborhood and found a severely damaged Honda sedan at the bottom of an embankment. Two people involved in the fight suffered minor injuries, but no arrests have been made in the case. Shocking video footage shows the red Honda quickly turning into the fast food restaurant's parking lot and right into a group of motorbikes and their owners. The car struck one person on a bike and proceeded to ram through a metal fence. Things quickly erupted into violence when one of the angry bikers smashed something through the vehicle driver's side window. Alleged witnesses told an investigative team from local station WCVB that the driver of the Honda was harassing the bikers before the fight made its way over to McDonald's. Onlooker Michael Nader, who passed by when the incident occurred and snapped some photos, described seeing someone getting beaten with helmets. He watched as several participants fled the scene, running between cars as they crossed the street. At the time the news broke, police had identified several, but not all of the people who were involved. They believe that the chaotic disagreement stemmed from a road rage incident between the bikers and the driver behind the wheel of the Honda. Number 6. Raymond Dick In one of the latest cases of Only in Florida, the city of Jacksonville has found itself footing the bill for damages to a resident's home after an enraged driver crashed into the abode during a police pursuit. Officers were chasing the motorist, 28-year-old Raymond Dick, after he allegedly shot at them. Luckily, nobody was hit by the gunfire. 
The seven-minute chase ended when the suspect veered into the front yard of local resident Robert McLean, who told local station News 4 Jacksonville that he was in his bedroom when he suddenly heard a loud thud. McLean said that he looked out his window and saw officers surrounding a crashed Ford excursion with their guns drawn. The SUV had rammed through the homeowner's front gate and brick post, causing an estimated $40,000 to $50,000 worth of damage. Dick was allegedly combative towards the police as they tried to arrest him, and he is also accused of grabbing and punching one of their canines. McLean, who had an unexpected front row seat to the show, said that it took four officers to subdue Dick. He was taken to a hospital for some injuries and faces a charge of attempted murder of a police officer. Previous court records suggest that the suspect has mental health and anger issues, as well as brain damage. Dick was previously charged with aggravated assaults on his disabled father with a fireplace poker. McLean said that he's glad that nobody was seriously harmed in the ordeal, but that he hopes his yard can be restored to its former beauty. Number 5. Edward James Heiston Police in Springville, Utah recently received a call from the distraught driver of a Toyota Tundra who claimed that he was the victim of a road rage-induced crash. The motorist pulled his car to the side of the road, expecting the other driver to do the same so that they could sort out the details of the accident. When he got out of his vehicle, the man behind the wheel of the car hit him and fled the scene. Officers quickly tracked the suspect down and identified him as Edward James Heiston. He told them he was trying to swerve around the Toyota when the driver struck his windshield, causing it to break. But the police didn't buy the story at face value. They reportedly smelled alcohol in Heiston's breath and subjected him to a sobriety test and a breathalyzer. His blood alcohol level tested out at 0.210%, which is more than four times the legal limit in Utah. Court documents revealed that Heiston already had two DUIs under his belt before his recent arrest. In fact, he wasn't even supposed to be driving. His privileges were revoked due to his alcohol-related offenses, and he was supposed to have an interlocking device in any vehicle he drove. In addition to being drunk behind the wheel, he was pulled over in his mom's car, which did not have the interlocking device. Heiston is facing charges for a DUI with previous convictions, driving without the interlocking device, being a restricted driver with alcohol in his system, aggravated assault with force or violence, reckless driving, and driving with a revoked license. It's probably safe to say that his driving privileges won't be restored anytime soon. Number 4. Andre Kenny Mark Green 29-year-old Andre Kenny Mark Green recently found himself on the wrong side of the law twice in one week when his road rage repeatedly got the better of him. In mid-March, he allegedly fired at least two bullets at another driver on Interstate 276 in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania, during the afternoon. According to a state trooper's report, someone in a gray sedan shot at a driver in a Ford F-150 pickup truck. Just six days later, a suspect in a vehicle similar to the first incident shot at another motorist at least twice in the same area. Two bullets were found inside the victim's car, and some shell casings were also recovered from the crime scene. Thankfully, nobody was injured in either shooting. The suspect's gray Kia Forte was soon connected with the disturbing acts of violence. Police tracked Green down at his job and charged him with aggravated assault, simple assault, harassment, reckless endangerment, and gun-related violations. His bail was set at $85,000. Number 3. Joseph Witkowitz in mid-2020, 25-year-old Joseph Witkowitz pulled his vehicle over to the side of the road in Elmsmere, Kentucky, after noticing that the car behind him was following a little too close for comfort. At the time, he had his girlfriend and child in the vehicle with him. The other motorist, 35-year-old Nicole Doherty, also pulled over. As she approached Witkowitz's car, an argument erupted between the two. To this day, the details of the exchange remain murky. But one thing was clear in the tragic aftermath of the encounter. Witkowitz had pulled a gun and fatally shot Doherty. Witnesses later recalled hearing three shots and seeing the man standing over his victim's lifeless body, according to Cincinnati.com. As Daughtry moved to lay in her back, Witkowitz walked toward her and shot her four more times, according to one onlooker, who refrained from being identified due to fear of retaliation. Another bystander pointed out that the suspect cooperated with law enforcement. Police nevertheless charged him with murder for his alleged role in Doherty's death after finding the woman's bullet-riddled body on the sidewalk. 
Whitgood said that he fired at the woman in self-defense. His attorney, Trisha Brunk, pointed out that the family didn't know Dorothy and were afraid of her, especially since she was supposedly driving erratically and swerving into oncoming traffic before the fatal encounter occurred. Brunk further explained that Witkowitz had pulled over to let the impatient driver pass him. In other words, he wasn't trying to provoke a confrontation with Doherty. The prosecutor, Kenton County Commonwealth Attorney Rob Sanders, argued that the suspect took things too far when he continued to shoot Doherty after she had fallen onto the ground. He blamed the man's actions on an uncontrolled case of road rage and described the victim's death as needless in his closing argument. After deliberating for four hours, the jury found Whitkowitz guilty of the lesser charge of second-degree manslaughter and imposed the maximum sentence of 10 years in prison. Number 2. Adrian Hill A 44-year-old South Lake, Texas resident named Adrian Hill allegedly had difficulty keeping his anger in check after an SUV struck his family's vehicle at a traffic light and sped off. Hill and his wife called the police, who reported to the scene and learned that the victim had attempted to follow the hit-and-run driver, but lost track of the vehicle. A little while later, Hill located the SUV that he thought had crashed into his car and pulled into the driveway where it was parked. He reportedly got out of his vehicle and walked towards the SUV with a gun in his hand as the occupants exited the vehicle. The man in the driveway pulled out a pocket knife, and the two men got into a physical fight. They both sustained non-life-threatening injuries in the struggle. Hale is accused of shooting the gun towards the home and the SUV. Thankfully, nobody was struck by the bullet, which police recovered at the scene. Officers concluded that the residents were not involved in the hit and run like Hale mistakenly thought. In fact, they were nowhere near the scene of the accident when it occurred. Hale was arrested for deadly conduct. The investigation into the hit and run is ongoing, and the driver of the SUV that hit the family's car remains unidentified and at large. Number 1. Juan Franco During a recent Sunday afternoon drive with his four-year-old child in the back seat, a 40-year-old Springfield, Massachusetts man named Juan Franco allegedly shot at a car with two people inside. Police were alerted to an incident that afternoon and reported to the scene, where they found numerous shell casings. They pulled Franco over and detained him after removing the child and a handgun from the car. The suspect faces a slew of charges, including carrying a gun without a license, carrying a loaded gun without a license, two counts of attempted assault and battery with a firearm, shooting a gun within 500 feet of a building, malicious damage to a motor vehicle, reckless child endangerment, and leaving the scene of a property damage crash. Details about the disagreement that led to the violence have yet to be released.